Hello, I'm Carla Potter, and I just wanted to take you through um, the development and of my work and the pieces um, that are currently on display there at the Bunnell Street Gallery in Homer. Um, the first slide, this is Ketchikan, where I grew up. I spent around 40 years here, um, and obviously it had a profound <laughs> influence on me. It's very much a coastal town. You can see that part of it is on pilings. Actually, a good portion of it is on pilings. So um, I was very uh, intrigued, but also um, visually acute to these pilings and the amount of things that clung to them. You'd go down the ramp, a ramp to the to a boat dock or to get on a plane, um, and you would see these pilings as the tide went out. Um, and it was always a fascinating um, environment there. Um, so that's kind of where I started. Um, it's a very rich and rainy environment and it's an island town. So obviously the water um, was a large part of my experience growing up. This shows just a detail sort of of a beach in Ketchikan at lower tide. The tides could swing, you know, 12 to 16 feet easily um, over um, the course of the day, I think twice a day. Um, and this whole world would be revealed, um, which of course was kind of slippery and gooey and smelled very saline. Um, so it was intriguing and delightful, but at the same time, a little um, off-putting, you know, and um, kind of a little bit of ew. <laughs> Um, but there's always the movement of the water and the kelp um, and the things um, that were present in that very lively and interesting environment. Um, and usually we think of lush, we maybe think of a forest setting and the moss, but here that subtidal zone or intertidal zone was also this incredibly lush and um, multi-textured place. So in my earlier work, I use more literally all these textures um, and the movement of the water and kind of the sexiness of that environment in my forms. And I used all that um, color as well, the earthy rich, chartreuse greens, you know, rusty colored kelp. All these items also had a certain translucency to them um, that I loved. Um, and my work was highly colorful. Um, also in this environment, sort of how I got around to putting barnacles on all my work was there was barnacles, all these rocks and stuff that you can see. Um, uh, underneath those textures were covered with these barnacles, which you see here on this mug um, on a beach just a little bit south of town in Ketchikan. It was an old garbage dump. So there was, I mean, iron machinery that's kind of melted into the rocks and then crusted with rust and um, had other things growing on it. But there was also all this glass and ceramic dishes, um, you know, broken um, objects and a lot of that kind of dinerware or something you might see, you know, on a cruise ship. Um, so all those things were also covered with barnacles. You pick up a piece of glass or ceramic and it would have this little colony growing on it. And um, the barnacle also, another interesting thing to me about it is if you have bare feet and were walking on these beaches or in these areas, um, they were always something you were trying to navigate around because they were pokey and sharp and um, uncomfortable to your feet. Um, 
<laughs> but they were very present in that environment. Um, they also were something that would grow on boats, on the boat bottoms um, and create drag. So fishermen <clears throat> were always trying to get them off. And they also would use a paint. So they used a paint on the bottom of their boats that had <clears throat> copper in it. Um, ironically, um, you know, I grew up in Alaska, but I'm currently living in Helena. Um, I discovered um, that there is a paint factory here that use, makes that paint. Um, so there was this kind of funny connection uh, from Alaska to Helena, Montana. But <clears throat> previous to my moving here though, um, having this experience with the barnacles, I had made some really fancy kind of teacups that had barnacles on them. And that was kind of relating the idea of, you know, a fancy teacup, but having this encrustation that suggests age because it sat around long enough or been in the water long enough for all these barnacles to grow on it. So it was kind of about beauty and aging, um, but also something very functional and present um, in society anywhere. Um, so, uh, how that relates and comes into the mug is my kind of devious sense of humor, um, thinking of putting those barnacles that fishermen were trying to get off the bottoms of their boats onto the mug that they would use while at sea on their boats. Um, so that is kind of the origination of this very plain white, functional um, pottery that these barnacles show up on. So they didn't originally start showing up on these types of dishes as decoration necessarily. It was more this idea of an annoyance or um, and a play with um, functionality with people that we're dealing with this little um, crustacean in their environment. Um, so that's where I started was with the fancy teacup, but then the mug that is currently um, one of the things that I'm making and is in this exhibition here. The fancy teacups and the barnacle as decoration started back in the early to mid nineties. Um, gosh, so long ago now. Um, so it took a while for this transformation <laughs> and for this to come back into my work. Um, I then started to put them on a barnacle shot glass. I was friends with, um, or became friends with a lot of musicians around Alaska at um, the Juno Folk Festival. And um, these musicians were just wonderful people, so generous with their time and music and um, entertaining me. And I was always, um, you know, you get a little possessive of your time and thinking about the value of how, of, of how you wanna value your work and price it for a gallery. And I had a little self conversation about how selfish that was in some way, watching all these musicians um, who were just so generous and would play all night, you know, for only for their own pleasure and for their um, audience. So um, we would have uh, a big party kind of towards the end of the folk festival called a bourbon brunch and um, people would take shots. So the the shot glass kind of became a part of the accoutrement of that big bourbon brunch. So one year I was like, I'm, I wanna make something in appreciation of all these musicians and their generosity um, with their time. And uh, I was trying to think of something and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could make those little shot cups. They kind of fit in with the, um, the way I was using barnacles on you know, a plain white um, ceramic uh, functional object. And also you have to take a second to figure out which side you're gonna drink from this little cup 
so there's that moment of very <clears throat> um, intimate reaction with this little object, plus the little barnacles helped you hold on to it better. <laughs> so that's where um, the shot glass originated and kind of the next step of development. I also think of um, these things relating to the briny sea. And so uh, bourbon and these kinds of things have a certain attraction and appeal in flavor, but at the same time, um, that strong alcohol thing. So there's that revulsion and enticement in the same um, object and experience of that object. And in relationship to that, um, quite a few years later, actually, um, I um, thought, well, it only makes sense to make the whiskey jug, um, the classic old jug to go with the, with the bourbon. And again, an object that held this liquid um, that is for consumption and has that repulsion and enticement um, in it. Um, a fun little um, serendipitous thing that happened is I work at a restaurant here and part of my job of course can be uncorking champagne, which is another uh, beverage that's kind of associated with um, celebration and that kind of uh, human gathering. And so um, somehow these corks <laughs> managed to fit these jugs um, almost perfectly every time. I don't know, I don't try and measure anything, but somehow uh, it works out. And so I love having, you know, the memory of that experience at those parties with those musicians plus the association with the cork from the champagne bottle, um, all fitting into this one object. Um, and of course, the barnacles. Um, one thing that happened also on these barnacles with that I use, it is actually copper that I use to make the green color. Um, that is also shows this movement um, that might be that aging of, um, objects where uh, copper and iron and rust start um, dripping down from um, things that have collected either on pilings or boats or paint or um, all these surfaces that interact with the water, with the ocean. Um, and further down the line from that, um, I actually had a customer that loved the barnacle shot glasses and cups and had bought several in Ketchikan. And she was like, do you make sake bottles? I love sake and it would be so fun to have a sake bottle to go with the shot glasses. And there's also a cup size, which is a little bit bigger than these objects that you know, kind of um, relates to on the rocks for a rocks uh, beverage where you would put ice cubes in the in the cup and then pour the bourbon or whiskey over that. And so there's that relationship to the rock and the um, accretion of the barnacle. Um, as well as to the ice cubes. I, it's all those little fun plays um, with words and ideas that um, interest me um, in my work, uh, as you will see, even leading into figurative work. Uh, the sake also relates to another liquid that is a communal beverage of the sake. And it also has a little bit of that um, kind of briny flavor. To me, it does. Um, in the making of these objects and trying to figure out what types of objects to make, I don't just pick, as in my previous work, it might be really sexy and curvilinear type of things that uh, were made from things I would find in the ocean. Um, so these objects um, 
are are a little different. I'm actually finding the basis for using them has more relationship to that real basic dinerware or real basic forms, not something that's more fanciful in its form. So that's kind of one of the parameters I use for deciding what to put the barnacles on. Um, that's starting to change in some ways and circle back as you'll see in some of the other work I'm starting to make. But I was very grateful for um, Jessica's notion of um, wanting a sake bottle. And so I've added that to my repertoire um, of barnacle encrusted functional pottery. Um, something else that's kind of gone on with these barnacle pieces is an adjustment in my thinking from thinking of these as kind of a little side work, you know, to sell something that was affordable to clients. Um, so much of my previous work was really expensive and big and elaborate. And these are very simple objects that um, anybody could come and afford. And also when you buy something functional like this, it immediately puts you in a different relationship with that piece of art where you're actually using it and sometimes putting it to your lips or um, drinking out of it. So you're um, having a different relationship with interacting with that object instead of just visually, actually physically um, interacting with this. So it was kind of a side line that I was doing, but the appeal to people and the way they loved it, I started making more and more and it feels good to sell things. And um, they were selling really well. And that was really um, affirming feedback. And I've slowly been <laughs> starting to take this work more seriously as people have told me how much they enjoy them and that they see them as little jewels or you know, a little piece of my work um, and they really love it. So um, that's been something I'm learning to accept um, and actually relish and um, move it forward and um, value it more myself. I've also, put the barnacles on the bowl. Um, another object that kind of fits in the parameters by um, the nature of it just being an object that would have broken and might have ended up in the trash and then deposited at that um, beach um, dump in Ketchikan. Um, so it's also taking these these things that had become broken and unuseful and almost like reassembling back, them back into something that um, people again have in their phone, home and use, um, but they carry that little bit of history um, in their new kind of life um, and participation in um, people's homes. Oh, I wanted to, again, another thing um, that was very present on the beach and that I had a huge interaction with growing up was the shore crab. Um, they didn't quite make sense to me on a functional object the same way that the barnacle did. So I was trying to figure out a way to pull that in, sort of keep that basic white um, function that the other work does, but this is um, a vase form. And one of the nice things about this um, in relationship to the crab is the crab, you know, scuttling, it's different than the barnacle. It has movement, it's a different type of creature. Um, so that movement of the crab up the form, because when you would lift up a rock on the beach, um, they would just come out from under the rock and just be, bolting for another place to hide. So anyway, but we would pick these little 
um, critters up. They were just, they were, again, they were kind of a thing that was really inviting and you wanted to touch them, but at the same time, they would poke you and maybe even very tiny, give you a little tiny pinch. Um, so that's kind of that continuing aspect of the imagery that I use. And again, that copper kind of green dripping down from that, from that little critter um, suggests, again, the movement um, of that animal um, scuttling up the side of the form. Um, it also brought back into my work a realism, like a place to bring the color back into the work on a, a bigger kind of way. Um, I've always loved realism and trying to imitate something so that it felt alive again. And so with the little crab trying to do all the detail and make it really look like a shore crab, it becomes a live thing um, interacting with the vessel form. Something I did in graduate school um, was, which I did, uh, was one of the, was where I departed from Alaska and um, decided to exist in a different environment that was a little drier and uh, had shorter winters. Um, but when I went to graduate school quite a bit later in life, I actually turned 40 on the day I graduated from, um, with my graduate degree. Um, actually, did I turn 50? <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> I can't remember anymore. Um, while I was in graduate school, I started doing uh, figurative work. Uh, my professors were like, so where are you in this work? Besides just the kind of metaphoric way that I was showing um, my, the things I grew up in and the environment I grew up in. So I started um, creating figurative work. And that is where um, the figure comes in that you see here, this kind of partial face. But I've always been trying to, the initial work I did was just more strictly figurative and related to the history of art more specifically. Um, but I always wanted to bring that ocean work and that um, more uh, directly into my, the figure more directly into that work um, where um, I'm sort of more present as a human and something everybody can relate to, I guess, as well as um, things from my environment. And here, um, the crab on the forehead, it's kind of an irritation or just like this part of my history that just won't go away. So that's where I came up with the idea of having the crab on, um, on the face. And it was a way of also just um, bringing in that figurative notion, and, but also having it be you know, on the forehead or on the head, which we consider the intellectual part of our our being as, a, as opposed to the, you know, uh, full figurative form, um, just kind of focusing in on that one part um, of the body. Um, and it also is a way for me to really focus on one part and learning, you know, how the eye expresses something and um, to help my skills develop in the figurative uh, realm of work. So this is, um, it's kind of a generic uh, figurative person. It's not necessarily a portrait of me. In some ways they're, I think because they're bald, it's a little bit more androgynous, which is just fine with me. It doesn't have to just be me having this kind of niggling memory. Um, anybody can insert themselves into that form. And that's just a close up of the little crab. They're very endearing little critters and they're, to me, they're just this really cool form and they're quite complex. You know, when you start doing this um, kind of detail, you really start looking at the detail of the form and learning it. And this is something that's been 
present, I think, in all of my work is just that close examination of anything from a painting or a sculpture or the actual um, reality of the environment that these things live in. When you go to do that type of realism, um, it really takes you into that object and seeing how it works or you know, seeing how a painter might have made a painting and picking that apart. And here looking at that crab and really seeing what gives it its personality and also how it's formed and what the color is. So you really get to know something when you do this kind of detail. <clears throat> and I like that kind of observation, you know, doing it myself, but also drawing in the viewer to that, um, that kind of intimate uh, interaction with the object. Um, instead of a broader environment, it's really a close-up kind of thing that draws you into the object um, on a different level. <clears throat> this is a picture um, of that environment that I was interacting with in Ketchikan on the beaches. You can kind of see in the fuzziness in the background, the, the little white are the barnacles that are on the rocks there. Um, but also I picked this image to show that kind of lushness and interaction of color, which I relate to fabric or brocade, which has been another um, inspiration in my work. And I was a dancer growing up, so all those costumes and fancy dress, and I love to sew. So this always kind of reminded me of all those different textures of fabric and um, so that has always been a part of my work and is creeping in um, to some of my newer stuff. Um, like this piece, um, I go back and forth <laughs> with the color. Um, the pure white kind of suggests to me the, um, a little bit more about memory in these pieces, but it's also, um, again here, this piece is really specific to the memory of all these different types of things, but also to a brocade fabric. And also I call this piece a sleeve, um, which is, you know, obviously a human garment, um, but I'm still trying to figure out how to bring all those um, experiences and textures into one piece. So you can see on this, the octopus arm, um, and the barnacles and the little crab and some of the flowing kelp, but also the actual aspects and parts of a brocade fabric, a really rich one. And the peony, which is a flower that I love and I've um, been growing here in Helena. Um, the octopus, I kind of feel like is a totem animal for me. They're just such brilliant animals. I love their the way they move and with all their arms they have incredible tactile um, ability and they learn through or they <laughs> feel and experience things through those um, suckers and I feel that way with my hands that touching things um, and feeling things is very much how I learn about stuff and is really um, maybe a heightened sense that I feel like I have. So this is called a brocade sleeve. Um, and you can see there's even barnacles on this. Um, this is a little close up. I've actually looked at images of, um, you know, I love haute couture and stuff. I've looked at some really crazy brocades. And so some of the items on this, the beading and floral aspects um, come from those kinds of fashion elements, but then, you know, including um, elements from my ocean upbringing as part of the decoration. So in finishing, um, or one of the other things that I have in this exhibition um, is this uh, piece that's sort of about memory and again, hierarchy, which is another content in my work, um, you know, presenting the barnacle as a, like a gem or um, something, you know, that's very abundant, but like a diamond kind of in the role that a precious um, jewel or something might play in decorating something. 
Um, this piece also is about the hierarchy. You know, generally the person is lifting up the rock to see the crab, but here the person is coming up from beneath the rock and that little crab is on top of the rock as opposed to under it. Um, it also, it is green and that's kind of referencing um, the color of the glass float. These are floats that are from Japan, I believe, and um, the west coast of the Asian um, continent. Um, these thing, these floats um, come up on the shore um, all over in Alaska, and I always loved them. Um, they're kind of this object that appeared from another culture and place. Um, anyway, so I had the idea to put that kind of netted cord that would be on the float that would attach it to the fishing nets um, as part of the memory of this person and just making the whole uh, head um, as the glass ball. And of course the ever present barnacle um, on that glass float. Um, so that's uh, kind of that, you know, coming from a foreign shore um, discovery uh, movement um, and then the slate rock and crabs and barnacles of my childhood and also bringing um, a lot more color back into the work. Um, it's another thing I've been trying to figure out how to do and do with integrity. Um, and meaning in the work. Um, so this is um, the latest thing that I've made that's in the exhibition. And um, I'm looking forward to pursuing this um, idea further. And I'm so excited to have this show at the Benel again. The Benel is a very special place to me. It's one of the first places. that showed my work and actually gave me a sense of value for what I was doing and um, making me take myself more seriously as an artist and which propelled me further into making more work and seeing my relationship to my home and the people there and um, Anyway, just that opportunity to grow, meet new people, travel further around the state of Alaska, and really was a critical part of my development as an artist. So I really want to thank Asia, who has been around since the beginning of my career, for um, providing me with many opportunities to show my work at the Benel, which is a really special place. Um, thanks for watching my presentation and I hope someday if you're not living in Alaska already you get to visit and see the lush shoreline there that um, I love so much. Thank you.